Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Diamond Detective Agency, surplus homicide, surplus hand grenades, black market embalming. Oh, Rick. Oh, Helen, what's with you? It's what's with you I'm worried about. What do you mean, what's with me? You know what's with you. Now, you stop that. That's my routine. I want that which you pilfered from the living room the other night, and I want it back, and I want it right away. Oh, but Helen, baby. Don't you baby me. Now, you get it down here. But I can't leave the office. I just got in. I haven't even washed out one sock. Rick, it wasn't fair when you stole that picture, and I've been embarrassed about it ever since, and I want it back. Oh, but honey, don't be that way. It it, 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 it looks lovely. Can you see it? Well, sure. Got it right on my desk. Now, Rick, I won't have it. Now, look, if anybody asks about it, I'll, I'll say it's me. You never were a baby. You started with a beard and a low whistle. Honey, honey, I had a baby picture just like it once, and believe me, from the way you're facing in the picture, you couldn't tell the difference between us. I'm lying on a rug. You probably had yours taken on spikes. Now, you bring that right over or I'll tell everybody your middle name. Helen. I'll see you in 20 minutes or I'll take a full-page chat in the time. You wouldn't. 20 minutes with the picture. Bye. Helen. Oh, dandy. Mr. Diamond? Uh, yes, but I'm afraid you'll have to come back. I, I've got to take care of something that might mean my whole future as a private oh. detective. Well, I'm sorry. I won't keep you, but... Well, could you tell me the name of another good detective? Uh, there aren't any. Goodbye. Oh, please. I don't know where to go. Oh, now, well, wait a minute. I, I'm sorry. Something's really wrong, isn't it? Oh, well, I, that's all right, Mr. Diamond. You go on. I'll find someone. Uh, look, I, I really didn't know you were in a tough spot. I... I've got enough time to listen. Oh, thank you. Who recommended me? My son. Oh, I've heard about you for several years. My name's Kirby, Mrs. Lenore Kirby. How do you do, Mrs. Kirby? Just how did your son know me? Well, he didn't know you well, only by reputation. Mm. He was a private detective also. Kirby? Bill Kirby? Yes. Wow. Um, now, tell me what's worrying you, Mrs. Kirby. Well, I don't know quite where to start. William, Bill, has been acting strangely for the last month or so. What exactly do you mean by strangely? Well, he's changed. He's begun to act nervous and irritable. When his sister or I would try to find out what was wrong, he'd get angry. He got steadily worse. And then one morning, Gloria... Gloria? Uh, my daughter, Bill's sister... Oh, go ahead. Well, she went into his room. He was asleep, so she started to hang up his trousers... When she turned them upside down, a lot of money dropped on the floor. Oh? Well, what do you mean, a lot of money? Well, Gloria said there must have been several thousand dollars. Mostly hundred-dollar bills. Did he have another source of income? I mean, besides the private detective business? Oh, no, no. At least mm. nothing I know of. Mm -hmm. We're not wealthy, Mr. Diamond. Bill supports us with what he makes, and Gloria works as a secretary in a law firm, and I try to keep my house in order. Of course, I haven't been terribly well since the children's father died ten years ago. I see. Then what happened? Well, Gloria started to put the money back in Bill's trousers, and he woke up. They had a terrible argument. Bill accused her of snooping, and she accused him of doing something illegal. And the next day... Bill packed his clothes and left the house. He took a small apartment on 110th Street. Uh-huh. Now, uh, uh, what is it you want me to do? Oh, well, there's more to the story. Bill continued to send me money to keep the house going, much more than he'd ever contributed before. I went over to his apartment several times and asked him about the money, and every time there'd be an argument. Did he give you any kind of an excuse? No, he just said he'd run into a good thing and that as long as it was helping out with the house, I shouldn't ask any questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then what happened? Well, three days ago, Bill came over to the house. I could tell he was terribly worried about something. He gave me a package, told me to hide it until he came for it and not to open it. Then he disappeared. He didn't go to his office or his apartment. And I haven't heard from him since. Did you call the police? Well, I didn't want to. He's mixed up in something. Oh, Mr. Dunn. I'm sure something's happened to my boy. 
I just know it has. Look, uh, uh, Mrs. Kirby, I admit it sounds a little fishy, but you never can tell. Maybe it's a dame, a, a girl. Could be a lot of things. Uh, where do you live? 984 Amsterdam Avenue. Oh, thank you. Now, you go on home, take it easy. I'll let you know if anything turns out. All right. I'm sorry I don't usually cry like this. Oh, Mr. Diamond, about your fee. Mrs. Kirby? Yes? Do you cook? Why, yes, I'm considered quite a good cook. Well, if I do anything for your son, I'm a sucker for corned beef and cabbage. Now, go on home, and I'll keep in touch with you. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. And God bless you. I'm afraid he knows me too well. Goodbye, Mrs. Kirby. Funny how you can run into a situation like that. Any other time, it's got to be a hundred a day in expenses. But that's because trouble doesn't usually bother me. There's too much of it around, and everybody's a stockholder. Then the little old lady walks in with a bucket full of heartache, and you realize the hundred a day in expenses is only the difference you carry around to make up for that big cold world outside. I put my merit badge away, grabbed Helen's picture off the desk, and headed for 975 Park Avenue. Well, you're late. I was just going to call the papers, but I wasn't quite sure how you spell your middle name. It's, um, C-H-O... Uh, 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 here's the picture. Thank you. I didn't know you had a mole in your... Rick. Aren't you coming in? No, no, I'm not. I'm mad. Won't even let me keep your little old baby picture. Now, about that mole... Now, you stop that. Why can't you come in? Well, I got a client right after I talk to you. I got to go down to the 5th Precinct and do some checking. Will I see you tonight? If you'll tell me about the mole. Now, Rick. See you at eight. Mm, bye, mole. A Sam. A baby. I left Helen and started down Park Avenue. Every private detective must get a license before he can operate. And the police department has to issue it. So I headed for the 5th Precinct Police Station. When I walked in the squad room, I spotted Sergeant Otis looking like he was headed for the elephant's graveyard. What's the matter with you, Otis? You're greener than a new lawn. Oh, hello, Shamus. I don't feel so good. No, as a matter of fact, you don't. A little pudgy around the shoulders. Ah, oh, come on, lay off. I tell you I feel sick. Let's see your tongue. Huh? Oh, uh... Mm-hmm. Well, how's it look? I don't know. But be careful who you show it to. Somebody's liable to think it's poisonous and kill it with a stick. Uh... Hello, Walt. Oh, no. Okay, I'm too tired to be scared off today. Who's dead and where? Not today, Walt. And what are you so tired about? Uh, we had a killing this morning. I've questioned every suspect in the whole state. Nothing. Who got dead? Maybe you knew him. A shamus. Uh, Kirby? What? Hey, how the devil did you know that? Just a guess. Guess my 38. Do you know something? I don't know anything, Walt. Kirby's mother was just in my office. Oh. Yeah, oh. Well, you don't have to get sore. I'm not sore. Just wondering who's going to tell Mrs. Kirby. Otis went over there a little while ago. He saw the sister. The mother wasn't home yet. Oh, that's why he looks so bad. Yeah, I guess so. Wouldn't you? Okay, where's the body? Downstairs. You want to take a look? Not especially. I told his mother I'd do something for him, and right now I don't seem to be able to think of a thing. Get the killer. Help me. Okay, let's go down and take a look. <laughs> Four slugs in him first, though. What kind of a gun? 12-gauge shotgun. Used a deer load. Anything on him? Just the usual identification. Okay, let's put him back. I don't know why he got knocked off. No motive, no nothing. The mother has quite a story. Yeah? She told me her son... Hey, Oh, no. Yeah? And here comes Malicious. Hey, we just got a call. Kirby's mother and sister just got beat up. Something awful. What? Come on, Walt. Well, this is crazy. First the son gets it for no apparent reason, then the rest of the family get beat up. I think I can tell you why the mother and sister got beat up. Yeah, why? Probably the package Kirby left with his mother. What package? I'll tell you about it on the way over in the car. Okay, Otis, okay. Come on, step on it. Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, this time you can use the siren. Oh, boy. Diamond. 
Come in. Hello, Mrs. Kirby. The doctor tells us you won't allow them to take you to the hospital. No, I'm not leaving my house. It'll take more than two cheap hoodlums to drive me out of my house. Well, the doctor says you'll be all right, but I think the hospital might be safer for a few days. This is Lieutenant Levinson, Mrs. Kirby. How do you do, How Lieutenant? do you do? I know you don't feel much like talking. Oh, no, that's quite all right. I'll be glad to help in any way that I can. Were they after the package your son left with you? Yes, but I didn't give it to them. I almost did when they started to hit Gloria. But I knew they had something to do with Bill's death. And you knew the package was important, too? Yes. Oh, where is the package, Mrs. Kirby? In the bread box. In a bread wrapper. Pretty cute. Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant? Go in the kitchen and bring me the loaf of bread in the bread box. Uh, you want some sardines, too? Otis, just the bread. Please? Oh, Okay. Mrs. Kirby, the two men who came here, do you think you could identify them? Oh, yes. It would be hard to forget them. You're sure you don't have any idea what kind of trouble your son was in? No. Uh, here's the bread, Lieutenant. Yeah. Well, I'll be... Hey, it's a shoe. Is this one of your son's shoes, Mrs. Kirby? Hmm? No, no. He wears much smaller size. No, that isn't his shoe. I don't get this. Nothing in it, just a shoe. A big one. What size is it? Uh, hey. What's the matter? Well, the shoe size on the inside, it says 6B and then five numbers after it. Well, if that's a 6B, you ought to wear matchboxes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... Oh, okay. I don't understand. Why would Bill leave a shoe and act like it was so important? Because it probably was very important. Uh, you think these numbers... Could be. Let's see. Well, if these numbers do mean anything, it sure isn't going to be easy finding out. Here's something, Walt. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Shoe's got new heels on it. It's been half-soled. Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant. Take the shoe down at the station. Give it to the lab. See what they can find out. And then get the boys out and check every shoe repair shop in the city. I want to know where the shoe was half-soled. Okay. Mrs. Kirby, you're sure you can't think of a thing that might give us a tip about your son? No, nothing, Mr. Diamond. Rick. I'm going down to the station, find out about that shoe. And then I'll send our rogues gallery over so Mrs. Kirby can try and pick out the two guys who worked her over. Oh, uh, check with me if you find out anything, will you? Right, Walt. Mr. Diamond, there's no reason for you to go on with this case. My son's dead. You can't help him now. I'm sure your business is very important. Mrs. Kirby, I said I'd do something for your son. Well, I was a little late. Now I'm going to do something for me. There's a killer loose, and two slobs who beat up women. I'm a little unhappy, Mrs. Kirby, so I've got to square this beef the only way I know how. First, I'd like to talk to your daughter. Now, now, look, Gloria... <laughs> It's tough, and I don't like to stick my big nose in when it is. But you want something done about it, don't you? Yes. Then think real hard. Can you tell me anything about your brother that might be connected with his death? No. No, Mr. Diamond. I've thought and thought and thought. I, I just can't understand it. Well, you may have been looking for the wrong thing, a reason or a motive. That's not what I want. What do you want? Something you might not even realize. Something that might not seem important, but is very important. Now, try to think. When you first began to suspect that your brother was in trouble, did he mention any names, talk about any places? No. Not that I can remember. What did he do when he wasn't at his office? Oh, please. Please, I don't know. I just don't know. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Mom and I appreciate what you're doing, Mr. Diamond. Right now, it's hard for me, but I'll try. Okay. No places. No names. Did he have a girl? No, he didn't have a girl. He led a fairly simple life. Had a regular routine. Routine? Mm -hmm. Mom used to worry about it sometimes. Said he didn't have enough fun. Didn't know anybody. What kind of a routine was this? Well, the usual thing around the house in the morning. He'd go to work. On his way home, he always stopped at a bar on Columbus Avenue for a beer. Then home. Dinner. Read until... 10, 30, or 11, go to bed. Nothing else? No, he did that every day. At least up until the time when he started acting funny and I found all that money. I see. Well, thanks. I, 
I'll let you know if anything turns up, Gloria. Thank you, Mr. Diamond. I hope you... Yeah. I left the Kirby house and walked out on the street. It was getting near six o'clock and a light breeze was blowing the night in. It was turning cold, so I flipped my collar up and started for Columbus Avenue and the bar that Bill Kirby used to stop in for a beer. I turned down 88th Street, picked up speed to shake the chill out of my ankles. Hey, you. Yeah? You diamond. So what? So where's this shoe? Oh, you're going to find it harder working me over than a couple of women. Working you over, maybe, yeah. Killing you? Everybody dies easy. Give me the shoe. Where's your friend? Move in this alley. I'll give you an introduction. I'm busy. You're going to be busy getting dead if you don't get in the alley. I got my gun in my pocket. I bet you shrink four feet when you aren't carrying it. What? Okay. Can you get him? Yeah. But it don't look like he's got the shoe on him. Yeah, but he knows where it is. Tell me, boys, is it fun beating up women? (laughs) More fun beating up those gum shoes. Ain't it, Danny? Sure. You want to tell us where the shoe is, Shamus? Right now, it should be in the police lab. Hey, Danny, you think those cops really took it out of the house? I don't know. I couldn't see. Diamond, I still think the old dame gave it to you when she went up to see you at your office this morning. What did you kill her son for? Who said I killed him, friend? Kirby got smart about the shoe like you did. He got dead for his trouble. How do you feel about your future, friend? Pretty good. The cops will figure that shoe out. Not unless they know what they're looking for. He ain't got the shoe on him, Bart. I think he's telling the truth. Let's go tell the boss. Yeah, what do we do with the gum shoe? Oh, I'm surprised at you, Bart. Give me your sap. Hey, now, wait a minute. For what? (coughs) Okay. You gonna knock him off? I get a salary for killing. The boss ain't paying me to knock this guy off. I want to save him in case he thinks I should later on. Let's go. It isn't easy coming out of a fast beating. When the guy works, you're over slow. You don't go to sleep right away. Not until he wants you to anyway. Then he taps you with a good one and that's it. When he does it in a hurry, the first one's enough to stun a dragon. But for some reason, he decides you need a few more. And friend, that's when coma sets in. When I finally pulled myself out of it, my watch said seven o'clock and my head felt like a balloon with rice in it. I finally came around to a reasonable way of thinking and headed for the bar on Columbus Avenue. Yes, sir? What li- Holy Ike. Give me anything with nerves in it and tell me where your phone is. Sure. You're a mess. Yeah, I know. Been advertising a popular cigarette. Been stepping out of thousands of store windows all over the country. Now, where's your phone? Uh, right over there, the end of the bar. Hey, you want us to put some plasma in this drink? Oh, that was a gem dandy. Oh. Lieutenant Levinson, homicide. Walt, Rick. Rick, where the devil you been? Playing patty cake with the two gonips who worked over Mrs. Kirby and her daughter. Well, we've been trying to get you. Otis has been calling blondes all over town. Mrs. Kirby and her daughter identify the two hoods. First name's Bart and Danny? Yeah, Bart Franchetti and Danny Miller. We have a pickup out on them now. They hurt you bad? Oh, I'll make it, but I'm going to ache for a while. What did you find out about the shoe? Well, we really got some fast action on those half-soles. Figured if Kirby picked them up in a shoe repair shop, it must have been somewhere in his neighborhood. We were lucky. We were right. Little shoe shop on Columbus Avenue. Columbus Avenue? What address? 695. Why? Because I'm in a bar right across the way. Huh? Can't see the shoe store now because it's too dark, but Kirby's sister told me he used to come in here for dinner. He could have watched it then. Oh, stay there. I'll be right over. Here you are, mister. Thanks. Uh, say, uh, did you know Bill Kirby? The Sharmas? Oh, sure. Uh, what do you mean, did I know him? He's pretty dead. Oh, no. He came in here every day, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, for a beer. Uh, but come to think of it, I ain't seen him since he left... It. Uh, left you what? Uh, uh, nothing, nothing at all. Now, wait a minute. If Kirby left you anything, let's have it. Uh, uh, if Kirby's dead, I'll turn it over to the cops. You want the badge? Oh, well, okay. Why didn't you say so? I got in the cash register. He told me if anything happened to him to turn it over to the law. Okay, here. Just an envelope. Thanks. 
Uh, what is it? Hmm, a name and address. Uh, oh, look. Uh, Lieutenant Levis will be here in a few minutes. Tell him I've gone to this address, 18 North River. Uh, that's down near the docks. Yeah, and tell him I've gone to find a guy named uh, James Willis. <laughs> Mr. Willis, who's calling? One moment, please. Honey, is Mr. Willis in? Yes. The emergency hospital's on the second floor. I always go around this way. It makes people notice me. Which is Mr. Willis's office, dear? Right over there, but I'm afraid you can't... Here's the badge, baby. Oh. And don't ring him. Yes, sir. Yes? Well, 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 well. James Willis, when did you change your name from Koslick? Now, look, Diamond, I've got a good job here. I never could have gotten it if the company had known I was James Koslick and I'd done time. In the shipping business, huh? What's an old-time safe cracker like you doing in the shipping business? You're not a cop anymore, Diamond. You helped put me away once, but I've quit the rackets, and I'm doing fine in a legit way. Now you can leave. What does your company ship? We're in export and import firm. We ship and receive everything. Now get out. What does your company import that might interest two professional thugs like Bart and Danny? What? I don't know what you mean. Where do you have your shoes fixed? Little place on Columbus Avenue, maybe? I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't intend to sit here and listen to you and your riddles. Miss Williams, will you please have one of the watchmen sent in to show Mr. Diamond out? Yes, sir, but two gentlemen wish to see you. They say it's very important. Well, I can't see anyone. Well, I think maybe you better. They seem very deaf. Miss Williams, I don't... Ow. What's the matter, Mr. Willis? Diamond, let go of my hair. Tell her to show the gentleman in, or I'll make Setting Bull look like a piker. Go on. Send the two gentlemen in, Miss Williams. Okay. I'm going over here behind the door. You be a good boy. You nearly pulled all my hair off. Well, what's the difference? The way things look, the state might have to shave your head anyway. Hey, Willis, we want to talk to you. Well, what's the matter? You sore because we came up here? Yeah, what's with that guy? He just sits there holding his head. Good evening, boys. Hey, hey, look who's here. Yeah, it's the Shamus. And he looked pretty. You fools, you... Two blundering fools. Now, wait a minute. If you're worried about Diamond, we'll take care of him. I told you I could never be seen with you. You know how we've all watched when the gold shipments come in? Oh, oh, that's it. That's what the shoe was all about. Yeah, you smart one. Shut up. I've got to think. You got the confidential shipping report and put it in that shoe in some kind of code so it could be picked up. Then your dear little boys were going to try to hijack the gold. Well, well, well. I mean, to shut him up. No, no, are you crazy? That secretary saw him come in. Take him out the same way. I'm going to be stubborn. Yeah? Oh, okay. Isn't it silly what a little 38 can do? Let's go. All right, but look, as long as I'm probably going to end up in the river, would you mind telling me one thing? Yes, I do. No, that's swell. That's really swell. Kirby recognized you going into that shoe store. He remembered you had a record, so he probably tailed you. Found out where you worked and went back to take a look at that shoe. He found the same thing wrong that I did. The numbers weren't a shoe size, and he probably thought it was crazy when you left only one shoe. So he took the shoe. You always were a pretty smart cop, Diamond. Danny. Yeah, boss. Before you kill the smart cop, pull his hair out. Pull his hair out? By the roots. Now take him out of here. Was Kirby blackmailing you, Willis? Yes. And being stupid, he didn't know what the shoe was for, but he knew it was worth something. Now, please, Danny, get Mr. IQ through that door. Move. Okay. Yeah, what's funny, Shamus? You boys are in for a big surprise. Oh, Mr. Willis must be free. Here they come now. Just keep walking, Shamus. Nothing, nothing's wrong. Oh, are you gentlemen through with Mr. Willis? Yeah, Fats, so go on in. He'll see you. Ah, uh, thank you. Let's go, Shamus. Oh, uh, one more thing. Yeah, now what? Duck, Rick! <laughs> Thanks, Walt. And you take it easy, Bart. I ain't going from the gun. I ain't doing nothing. Please, don't shoot. Walt, James Willis is really James Koslick. I'm going in after him. Well, here, Cat, you'll need a gun. Is he in there? Out the window. I went over to the window fast and spotted my man just dropping down off the fire escape. The building fronted on a long dock, and Willis had 50 yards to go before he could find cover. Then I said that stupid thing. Willis! In the name of the law! Stop! 
Well, he didn't stop in the name of the law, so I rested my arm on the windowsill and led him about two feet. At 50 yards, a running man can be hard to hit with a 38. <laughs> Sometimes. You get him, Rick? Yeah. See you down at the station. Uh, no cream. Twelve lumps. Right. Say, I had a phone call from the president of Continental Shipping where that Willis guy worked. <coughs> oh, what do you make this coffee out of? Gunpowder? He says there's always been a standing reward of $1,000 for the apprehension of any person attempting to rob their shipment. Uh-huh. Uh, hey, Diamond. Miss Asher phone. She wants you should call. Thanks, Otis. Thanks? What's wrong with you? You heard him, Otis. He said thanks. Okay. He must be sick. More coffee, Rick? Yeah, I'll have another cup. Hello? Hi, honey. Rick, where are you? I thought you were coming over. Well, baby, I've, uh, I've got to stop by and see a nice old lady named Kirby. Her son got killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Will I see you later? Uh, no, I don't think so, honey. I'm, I'm a little tired. All right, Rick. Well, don't sound too unhappy. I'll see you tomorrow night. Well, all right. But you always sing to me, and I wanted you to sing tonight. Well, I haven't gotten any letters from the apartment building next door yet, so I'm going to lay off one week and see if the tenants miss the singing. All right, Rick. I'll see you tomorrow night. Goodbye, baby. Bye, Rick. Well, I think I'd better get over to Mrs. Kirby's, Walt. Well, don't you want your coffee? Yeah, give it to Otis. What are you going to tell Mrs. Kirby? I mean about her son and the blackmail. Well, what are you going to tell Continental Shipping? Well, you caught him. You get the thousand. Oh, Mrs. Kirby's pretty broke. Uh-huh. Kirby was the one who really spotted the play. Yeah, but if I say anything about the blackmail... What blackmail? Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, that was another case, wasn't it? See you later, Walt. Uh, Rick. Yeah? Oh, nothing. Be a good boy. have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Stephen Dunn, Peggy Weber, and William Johnstone. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by Richard Sandville. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Saturday night brings some of the week's best radio entertainment when you tune for the stars on NBC. Stay tuned every Saturday for a great lineup of programs, including Hollywood Star Theater, Ralph Edwards' Truth or Consequences, Your Hit Parade, A Day in the Life of Dennis Day, The Judy Canova Show, and Grand Ole Opry. All the best on NBC.